G'day ladies and gents and welcome to Elite Dangerous with Mags and it's been a while since I've done a video on Elite Dangerous it just so happened that I was putting this one together and doing the recording for it right when Elite Dangerous was released on Steam so I picked an appropriate time. So I guess the first question I've got to address here is why is it taking me so long to get Elite Dangerous back up on the channel? Well the truth of the matter is I haven't been playing it all that much. It's one of the things I like about Elite Dangerous, it's a game that I can play and enjoy and have an absolutely amazing time with. And then I can just drop it and not play it for a month solid and go do other things. And it won't be a problem, I can come back to it at any time I feel like. A small lag spike jumping into this cluster, but hey, binary star system. I don't run into these very often, I don't get far enough out to encounter them. God, it's beautiful. Oh well, moving on. So as I was saying, it was one of the things I liked the most about Elite Dangerous. It's a game that I can pick up and I can play and play and play and then I can just drop it, walk away from it from a month to two months. And it's not a problem. When I come back, everything will be sitting exactly where it was and I'll be able to go off. And this is largely because it's not a story-driven game at the moment. You make your own story. So if I decide that my character is going to take a month off, then he takes a month off. And I really, really do love that lack of pressure to play. But as you can see, I am most certainly back on the job now, and as you can see, I am on a little bit of a journey. Just stopping over here, I'd like to introduce you to the future of British Petroleum. God, the detail level in this game just blows me away, watching the shadow move over the ring as I'm moving around a dock. So, anyways, this is Harvestport. This is one of two stations that I had to visit on my 180 light year journey down to my destination point. This one here is actually only a couple of jumps out from where I need to go, but my current fuel load, I won't get there. Now, my destination point for today is Tau 3 Iridani. This is a federal system on the border of an imperial system that is, well it's primarily a mining area, but it makes a very good system for farming bounties, and that's how I like to play Elite Dangerous. I'm not really into the Euro Truck Simulator in space feel that a lot of Elite Dangerous's trading has. I know there's some people that really enjoy it, and hell, I don't mind doing it every now and again, but it's not my thing. I like to make my money by blasting it out of people's faces, so I do bounty hunting. Unfortunately, I'm kind of a little broke at the moment, which is why I'm making this journey. I have about 60,000 credits in the bank, and I'm flying an eagle, and that's pretty much everything I have. The problem, of course, was the rewards on bounty hunting prior to the Wings update. You basically got paid nothing. You might make 50, 60,000 credits for a bounty every now and again, but it was incredibly rare to happen. To top it off, those bounties were extremely hard to get, as they were usually fairly powerful ships, usually much more powerful than you were, with extremely difficult AI inside of them. When you first start as a bounty hunter, the Eagle is pretty much the ship you'll be going to, which is what I'm flying here, and it really struggles when you start getting up to Cobra Mark III's and Anacondas with elite level AI pilots. Trying to pull bounties big enough to be worth your time is quite a challenge. Or I should say, was quite a challenge. With the Wings update, there was also a slight overhaul of bounty hunting, specifically the value of the bounties and the rarity of valuable bounties arriving. This has turned bounty hunting into a viable way to make money and progress your way through the game. It's not going to make the kind of cash you can get into trading rares as a trader, but you'll get into the ships you want, and if you like shooting things, you'll get into it doing what you enjoy doing within Elite Dangerous. So as you can see on the screen, this is my Core Dynamics Eagle Mark II, and it has had some significant upgrades from stock, but nothing that would be out of the range of a brand new player just starting the game. It does have a wicked paint job though, but paint jobs don't affect combat effectiveness, and that's really what I want to show in this video. I am flying a ship that is easily achievable for a brand new player, and I'm going to show you how easy and quickly you can make enough money to upgrade ships into something significantly larger in Elite Dangerous. I'm doing this mainly because, well, while I was getting ready, this video was actually just going to be basically an Elite Dangerous vlog, what I've been up to within the game. But I've been reading a lot of the reports coming out since it came on Steam, and a lot of the complaints from new players just picking the game up on Steam is that they can't make any money, and they can't get anywhere, and they don't understand how they're supposed to be making money. They don't understand trading. I can't really help you with the trading much, because I don't do it. But I can show you how to make enough money to buy a Viper and some upgrades for it within about an hour. 
So the first thing I need to say is even the eagle isn't a requirement for making money in the manner I'm about to describe. You can do this in a sidewinder, providing you're very, very careful. There is only two things that you must have. First is a laser. You want a laser, preferably gimbal, just to make aiming a little bit easier for you, especially if you're a new player. Uh, you want a laser because it doesn't run out of ammo, and you don't need to do a huge amount of damage. And the crystal blue star marks our arrival to Tower 3 Uridani. And we're going to go through to our new home. This is the station we'll be operating out of as a base. Always remember when transferring to a system that you're going to bounty hunt in to land on a station within that system and dock before going and starting the bounty hunting. If you mess things up and you happen to get killed while you're out doing trying to get the kills, you will be teleported back to the last station you were docked at. And if that station is 50 light years away, that can be a problem. So anyways, as I was saying, the first requirement, a laser, preferably gimbaled. Second requirement is a K-Warrant scanner. Basically the way it works is bounties that you see when you, when you don't have a K-Warrant scanner in is a bounty that exists only and solely within the system that you are currently within. However, targets that have bounties on them within one system generally have bounties on them in multiple systems. The K-Warrant scanner, when you scan down a target using it, and then kill it, you will get the bounties not only for the system you are currently in and the empire you are currently working under, but for every empire. So you will get federation bounties, alliance bounties, imperial bounties, the bounties for individual systems that that ship is wanted in. You get the whole lot when you go and hand these in, but basically you make more money. Now the catch on this is that bounties don't pay out straight away. They basically go into your ship and then you have to go to a bounty office in a station like the one I was just docked at in order to hand them out. So this is a federal system. I can go to that station and I can hand in all my federal bounties. But if I want to head to a, say, I want to hand in, say, an imperial bounty, I need to go to an imperial system, dock at a similar styled station that also has a bounty office, and hand over my imperial bounties there. So there is a little travel required after time. Thankfully, when you farm bounties in one particular faction space, the bounties for the other two tend to only build up slowly over time. So you'll probably find once every probably call it five or six hours worth of farming, you may have to make a run out to hand off a million dollar bounty to an imperial system. So this of course leads to the question exactly what are you looking for in a grinding site? Well what you're after is these, resource extraction sites. Now these are generally considered to be mining sites, it's where your miners would come to grind the, the belts around this gas giant. Now as anybody who's played EVE Online or anything, any kind of space trading mining combat game ever, Anywhere where there's a mining site, there is pirates. If there's miners there, there's pirates. It's just the way it works. And that's what you're doing in system. You're looking for the pirates. You're here to farm them, the same as the miners are here to farm the rocks. So as you can see, first target's up. K warrant scan. Once you get a lock on, press and hold the button. K warrant scan activates. You can see its uh, progression on the left hand side of the screen. I was a little rusty in my maneuvering at this time. It's the first time playing in some time, so ignore my handling here. Once the scan's complete, I'll just flick open the contacts list, and as you can see, this Imperial Clipper has a 67,000 credit bounty. So, beautiful. Start putting some shots into him, and now he's flagged red. Now, an Imperial Clipper is a significantly larger and more powerful ship than an Eagle, and I said you could do this in a Sidewinder before, so how does that work? Well, you're not the only ship inside of these sites. These sites are in Empire space. In the case of Tau 3 Iridani, it's a federal system, which means federal security services. The AI that, if you do something naughty, will come over and shoot you in the face, are in this system, and usually in mass. They're usually only in small ships. At the biggest, you might see federal security vipers, but as a general rule, it's eagles and sidewinders. However, there is lots of them. I've seen anywhere up to 30 or 40 of them in a system at a time. And they will take down pirates fast, as you just saw, so make sure you get shots on target after you've scanned them. As quickly as possible, otherwise you will miss the bounty. So, if Federal Security Services is shooting down all the ships for you, how are you getting the bounty? Well, that's one of the things that changed in the Wings update. Security Services and AI will not take bounties now. If you scan down a target and you put shots into it and the target is red, it is tagged yours. You will only have to share that bounty with other players if other players get involved in the bounty as well. So if you put together a group of three or four ships and a ship has, for example, a 10,000 credit bounty and you have four ships together and all four of you get hits, it gets split four ways. You'll get 2,500 credits each. 
Now this is a godsend for a new player, because what it means is all you need is that one laser, just enough to tag the target, and stay close enough, continue putting shots into it just to make sure you're doing damage and helping the AI along. And the K-Warrant scanner, so you can scan the target down and make sure you get the maximum bounty, and you can sit in a site like this, and you can be hunting anacondas within 20 minutes of logging onto the game for the very first time, and picking up, you know, 20 to potentially up to 60 or 70 thousand credit bounties per ship from the word go. Now most of the combat in this video is me coming back after about a month and a half of not playing the game, fairly rusty, as I said I'm in this eagle, I had about 60,000 credits in the bank, by the time I'm done I have 700,000 credits give or take, and enough money to buy a viper and do some fairly serious outfitting to it, straight from the word go. Now the vipers are only, give or take, about 150,000 credits each to buy, they're a very good ship, but they're the step above the eagle. Now at a 700,000 credits in about the space of an hour, that's a new player within an hour of starting this game, using this sort of a technique, could have himself in a ship that used to take weeks. As I said earlier, it doesn't make the huge amounts of money you can make from doing things like trading rares, however, I would argue that for a brand new player coming into Elite Dangerous, this is probably the easier way to make a large amount of money in a short period of time. So, that covers why we're farming this way, and how to farm credits this way, but what about the where? Now as I said, I'm in Tau 3 Iridani, but this isn't the only system that you can do this in, it's just one that I've chosen, and there is a couple of things that you're looking for in a system that you want to farm from. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of locations you can do this in, depending what you're looking for. I actually have a handful of them, not all of them I'm ever going to show you, but these sites I choose which one I want to go for, depending on which faction reputation that I happen to be grinding at the time. At the moment I'm grinding Federation, so this is why I'm in this system. So what are you looking for? Well, Tau 3 Iridani is a federal system that has a large number of mining and extraction sites. This is the first thing you're after, a system that has a large number of these sites. So if you go into one and there doesn't seem to be a lot going on there, there's not a lot of pirates spawning in, you can reset the instance a couple of times and if there's still nothing spawning in, you can just go to a different site and try again. And it gives you an option for rotating around a little bit and trying to find those pirates and those really big, really, really tasty bounties that you're looking for. So that's simple enough. Uh, an extraction mining system is your first target. Now the second thing you're looking for is that one of these systems should border a system of a different faction. So for example, Tau 3 Iridani borders an imperial system. So we have two factions that are sitting side by side, and that Imperial system also has a space station with the Bounty Office in it. This is the second thing you're looking for, these two systems to be butted with two uh, space stations that you can hand over your bounties within. So right now I only actually have to make one jump from this location, and I'm in the system where I can hand over all my Imperial bounties. This means I only have to travel for Alliance bounties. This obviously minimizes the amount of time that I spend traveling, maximizes the amount of time that I spend shooting things in the face, and therefore increasing my income and getting me into bigger ships faster. Now the third thing you're after is within the stations themselves, and this one's here's pretty easy to find out once you're there, but there's not really a way to find out before going and checking out these systems. And that's looking for one of these two stations that on either side of the border to have have their space station be very well stocked in regards to ships and components. There's no point in picking a spot to mine if you have to travel 20 to 30 light years in order to buy another upgrade for your ship, or to buy a new ship. You really, really, really need those upgrades to be available in the station that you're using as a base. You can pick them up as soon as you've handed over those bounties and get your ship upgrades going from the word go. And this is part of the reason why I'm not afraid to show this particular system on YouTube, because that's where this system happens to fail. The stations themselves have the bounty officers and everything else that's needed, but the supply of components for ships is actually pretty thin on. I did manage to scrape together a Viper out of the station, but I've got to go travelling to find some of the upgrades, and once I've managed to get past the Viper, I've actually got to travel around 30 to 40 light years in order to be able to get my next ship, which is going to be a Vulture. You can do much better than this. 
base. But what you're after for starters is just that, those mining extraction sites, and you're after something where two different factions border one another and both have space stations. So how do you find these? Well, load up your galaxy map, and what you're looking for is set your search parameters to show alliance or show faction, and then go through and set it to show mining sites, and that brings you up your your list. You're looking for a point where there's one next to two stars of two different factions, and you're looking for them both to be named. Not a generic serial number name for a system, you're looking for the system to actually have its own name. Any of those will have space stations in them, ideal for what you're after, that include bounty officers, and there you go. You'll notice doing this search, there are hundreds upon hundreds of points throughout the known galaxy that you can do this from. Just pick the one that's closest to you and head to it. Now, it's likely that the system you arrive in is going to be fairly understocked in terms of ship components as well, but it doesn't really matter if you just try to make your first batch of money. Just get in there, get some cash up so you've got some bank, grab whatever upgrade you can or a new ship if there is one available on there, and then move to the next site until you find one that hits all the three key areas. Set up your base and there you go, that's your money grinding for the next, well, this should be good enough and make enough income to fund you all the way up to Vulture. Once you start going into light capital ships, that's where you're going to need to be making significantly more. The Vulture comes in at about 5 million credits, which you can make in a day or a couple of days depending on what time you've got on, but once you start going beyond that into the larger ships, you start looking at stuff in vicinity of 50 million plus. And that is a lot of money to try and grind this way. You'll be spending weeks doing it. It's probably a touch too much. However, this will get you into something like the Vulture. And the Vulture is an incredibly good ship for taking on some of the more advanced bounty hunting techniques and really grinding out that money fast. So, that's the basic instructions for a new player to begin making significant amounts of money on Elite Dangerous without having to worry about trying to get into bigger equipment straight away. This, this will be what gets you into that bigger equipment. So, moving on from grinding credits as a new player, there was one thing extra that I wanted to discuss, and this popped up the last time I brought up a video on Elite Dangerous and showed some of its combat. The combat didn't look incredibly interesting, and a few people did comment on it. I just want to explain that now. This is combat versus NPCs. Even the most intelligent NPCs in Elite Dangerous are thick as bricks in terms of combat maneuvering. Basically, the difficulty level of AI in Elite Dangerous tends to revolve more on how they use their systems rather than how they maneuver their ship. So the combat is... Well, it gets a little bit more interesting than what you see here with some of the more intelligent AIs, but for the most part it's their ability to rapidly target subsystems to be able to shift power around their ship in order to maintain their shields. Some of them are equipped with actual, you know, away from station repair systems that allow them to repair particular components or repair hull while still being in combat. And this is how they become incredibly dangerous to deal with, because they're able to fix themselves and they're just able to target things and manage things faster than you can. When you start engaging players, it's a whole different game. The amount of tactical options you have available in player versus player combat in Elite Dangerous is mind-boggling. I've been playing this game since the first stages of closed beta, and I'm still learning some of the tricks you can do. In fact, that sounds like a great subject for my next Elite Dangerous video. I think I'll show some of the things that you can actually do when you go into a player versus player combat, but first... The results of one hour of farming pirates in the mining belts. We're looking at 656,000, that was actually 700,000, except I did grab a couple of upgrades for the eagle that were available at the time, and significantly more than what I actually need in order to buy the viper, which is what I'm doing right now. Picking up my nice new ship. And I cannot begin to tell you how pretty this thing's cockpit is. It just feels lethal. It does have a nasty blind spot on top, something you'll have to get used to coming from something like the Eagle or the Sidewinder that has great top view visibility. But I think I'll show you more of this ship in the next video. Until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you between the stars.